<laughs> hey guys, before we start this video, I gotta give a big shout out to Dark Sea to Phil. He's the one responsible for the new channel art that you're seeing right now. Honestly, I'm blown away. I think it came out fantastic. It's exactly what I was looking for. I was a little skeptical because this is the first time I've ever commissioned art on the internet at all, but the experience with him was fantastic. I can't recommend him enough. Well, let me tell you something, brother. Snort, 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 tell you, drip, snort, snort, I got the drip. One last thing I wanna talk about, real quick. Look, I know that I'm not one to talk, but but anytime that this guy says real quick, it's always filled with a bunch of nonsense that actually didn't need to be said. You can pretty much take the amount of time that he's talking and cut it in half, and that's about how much time he probably could have spent talking if he would have just got to the point. And look, I know this is the pot calling the kettle, but I just wanted to point it out. Because then I wanna do some shout outs and if we have time for Q&A. So there's been a suggestion made. <clears throat> I like the suggestion, excuse me. However, I just don't know how I'm going to implement it. I'm going to leave the DSPN logo because it has to do with DSPN notably. Basically, here's the deal. Actually, you know what? Now, nah, well, it's not technically news. It's an idea. So let's go back. And as you can see, we're clearly off to a riveting start. As you know, I do these different segments of the show. <clears throat> Correct? Sometimes a certain segment is the highlight of the show. Like that, that story about Activision Blizzard buyout is pretty much a big highlight of the news segment of today, correct? That's what people probably want to know about the most if they were going to watch me cover news. See, but that's where you messed up, DSP, because you don't cover any news at all. You're not a journalist. You're not covering any story. You don't do cover. You talk about the news if the news is just things that you see on Twitter that are happening in the world, but you don't even talk about these things objectively. You have a very clear bias on how you feel about the things that you talk about. That's not exactly where someone should be getting their news from. That's not very good coverage. I know you think that by using the word coverage, you give some air of legitimacy to what you do, but you don't actually cover any news. You're just a clown who reads tweets. And it's fine if that's what you want to do. Just don't lie about it. Don't make it sound like it's bigger than it is. Well, what's happened is I do this show once a day. It's a long podcast. It lasts anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half, and there's a ton of topics covered. It doesn't have to last that long, though. If you could focus that gin brain of yours for longer than 30 seconds at a time, you could probably cut the podcast length in half, especially if you didn't do Q&A segments at the end of every podcast for 30 minutes every single day. Because the most interesting question that you're going to get is someone asking if you've ever punched a bee in the butt. That's not exactly the best question on the planet or anything. Well... How do you find the content in the show you want to watch? Well, we have AI timestamps that every day get posted on the show. So if you're watching the new show, you're like, oh, I wonder what's in today's show. You check the description, you'll see all these AI timestamps. You'll be able to jump to what you want. But <clears throat> what some YouTubers have found very successful <clears throat> is if they run a podcast like me, they will do excerpts of certain topics and split those videos off as separate videos. So imagine if we did a podcast excerpt that was only five or 10 minutes long, just covering that buyout story and the Bobby Kotick leaving Activision Blizzard story. And that was a separate video, right? I know it's easy to just say, oh, I thought of that already, but I did actually think of that already. And I almost thought that that's why he started putting overlays on things like DSPN or Phil's day off. Because I thought his intent was to be able to find those quickly in the podcast just by looking at the scrolling preview at the bottom. Separating the different segments that he does on his full length podcast is just another one of those quality of life things that he refuses to do, even though it would probably make his content more digestible. Especially because his podcast isn't exactly the most organized thing anyway. It's not always in the same order. Some of the segments go on for way too long. Some of them get cut really short. So if for whatever reason someone is actually looking for a specific segment because that's what they like to see DSP do, it's definitely more work now than it's even worth doing. Simply putting that out on my channel, some people might find that and find the channel and watch that content and say, oh, I like that. So he covers news stories every day. I'm going to subscribe to that channel and I'm going to check these out every day, right? It's something that can genuinely add engagement and discoverability to a channel, all right? However, <clears throat> however, get ready for every single excuse under the sun why DSP can't just cut his own content and re-upload it. Here's the problem, all right? As you know, I am one of the most prolific streamers out there. And if you're thinking what I was thinking, I did go ahead and define what prolific meant because I was worried that he was using it incorrectly. But fortunately, this time he actually knows what the word means because it speaks nothing to the quality of the work that he puts out and only to the quantity of work that he puts out. And Lord, does he put out a quantity of work. I'm here all day streaming. I'm here from 10 in the morning till almost 10 at night with a break in between for dinner, but I'm here constantly streaming. I don't just do one podcast and walk away for the rest of the day. 
But if you learned how to better use your time, it would be for the betterment of your channel as a whole. Like I said, if you cut out the 30 to 45 minutes that you have on every single podcast, that would be 30 to 45 minutes you could do anything else with. Couple that with taking out a couple of those 20 minute bathroom breaks that you decide to take. And look at that, you've got yourself at least an hour so you can go cut some footage up and put it on your channel for people to actually watch. But one of your biggest characteristics, DSP, is your poor time management skills. I don't think I've ever seen anybody spend their time quite as inefficiently as you because of that i don't really have opportunity to sit down review my content decide what's split worthy and split it out and i'll give you an example all right when i finish this stream it ends at 4 p.m that's around a six hour stream and it takes youtube no exaggeration hours to process that stream i can't even just skip around the stream and get timestamps or anything properly until that thing processes which could take two three hours minimum to even work properly Okay, if we go based off just what you said, sure, maybe you can't cut up the footage from that day, but you could definitely cut up the footage from the day prior, at least for ease of access for your audience. I mean, sure, it's one day later than you actually said it, but if people actually wanna watch a certain segment of yours, they'll just watch it a day late. If you need a good example of this, you could look at this very channel. I'm typically one to two days behind DSP at all times. I mean, this is for a few reasons, but no one has ever asked me why, and no one's ever pointed it out either. They just want to watch the DSP content and they move on with their day. And hey guys, I really appreciate that. It makes it a whole lot easier to not have to be right on the ball all the time. I got a whole lot of stuff going on. So the people who really need to be on the ball, they'll watch it live. The people who just want to see it later, they'll just wait the extra day. It's not that big a deal. So this is just another excuse from DSP. Imagine that. In addition, I don't know where the pertinent stories start and begin. I don't know what you guys would find to be the most pertinent stories. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you could just do what I do when I have to go clip you myself and just look at your overlays as a visual indicator of where you're at in the podcast. I mean, if you made a couple of more overlays to cover the whole thing, then it really wouldn't be that hard at all. And how do you not know when your own content what the most pertinent things that you're saying are? How do you not have a general idea of what's the most important thing that happened on your own show? I mean, just generally speaking, most of your news stories should probably be cut into their own segment and posted and Phil's day off should also be posted separately. I mean just examples of things that people might actually care about individually. How does he not understand how to cut up his own content into separate segments? And just separate from those two examples, anytime he has a big segment about changes to the channel or the suggestion box or something, those should also probably be cut and put as individual videos. There DSP, if you watch Detractor content, take those ideas, run with them. It'll make your content a lot more digestible and way easier for us to track your channels. So it's a win-win. But honestly, Snort Hogan always does a fantastic job clipping your stuff. So shout out to Snort Hogan. Like, for example, today I would say, yeah, definitely this Activision Blizzard story is the biggest one. That could be a clip worthy of being clipped out and being a separate video. But I don't know every day what you guys find to be uh, the most, you know, notable content, being honest. What you may not realize is YouTubers who frequently do this practice are much bigger than me and they actually pay people to do this. You can actually have someone become an administrator of your channel and have access to all of your video content. And that person can go in and actively go through a stream once it processes, find those stories, clip them out, highlight them and create separate videos. And that's what YouTubers do. That might be what some YouTubers do, but it's definitely not what all YouTubers do. In a similar vein to how some people have gardeners come out to their house and take care of their yard, but most people probably don't and they'll just take care of it themselves if they care about it enough. Despite how time consuming that might be for them, because it's something that they actually care about making look presentable, which obviously you don't particularly care, which is fine, you don't have to, but don't cry and say that you can't do it because X reason. I mean, if it absolutely came down to it and it would help your channel, channel out. What is Kat doing that she can't learn something like DaVinci Resolve on the most basic level? And DaVinci Resolve is free, just so that she can cut up your clips really quickly after they're posted and show them to you and then you can upload them. I mean, realistically speaking, what would that be? An hour of her time to help the main provider of the house provide the house and all of the bills and everything. You know, your two big bills that you pay. It just seems ridiculous to me that you can't find a way, any way possible to clip your own stuff that would actually take about an hour. They don't do it themselves. They actually pay people as employees to go do that for them, especially someone who works a lot, you know, or someone who's bigger than me who has the money to do that. I'll be honest, I just don't, already I'm in here all day long. I don't have time to wait for my stream to process, come in when it processes, go through a 20 or, or a two hour stream, find the thing, clip it out, name it. I would never leave this office.
And we all know DSP is the king of making simple tasks sound like the most complicated things on the planet. I've clipped his podcasts myself before. The reason I don't like to do it is because they are two hours long and they just eat up a lot of space on my hard drive while they're on there and I just don't like doing that. But it's really not that difficult to just download the whole thing, put it in your editing software of choice, scroll really quickly through and find the overlay that corresponds to the segment that you're looking for. And if the segment is a little longer and you're looking for a specific part, you can even speed up the footage, at least while you watch it. Highlight the segment, hit cut, remove the rest of the footage, and then render it and put a name on it. At maximum for a clip, it's about 20 minutes if you're slow. This is all just excuses. There is absolutely zero legitimate reason why he can't do what people are asking him to do. I mean, even if he just posted one clip out of the entire stream per day, it would probably help people at least a little bit and at least show that he's putting some effort Effort into doing what they'd like but he can't be bothered because it's hard to cut a clip while you're pulling hogan's you know what i'm saying i would never have time with my family at this point um sadly i just don't think it works for me i think that it makes sense the practice makes sense absolutely it does the practice does make sense i like the idea i think that it's a grand idea and it could genuinely help this channel because i cover news topics every day most people don't know that so he understands that it could greatly help out the visibility of the channel, but he just refuses to do it because he's made up a hundred excuses that he genuinely probably believes. He's just a perpetual victim who can't do anything for himself because he talks his way into being a victim. He convinces himself that he's incapable of everything ever. Right? They don't know that I'm covering gaming news. They think that I just do a podcast where I blab and then I go right into games and we dick around all that. They don't even understand I'm covering serious topics. Having videos on those topics could be very interesting and actually bring a whole new audience to this channel. But I don't see how I could viably do it because of the amount of content I put out, you know? So the question is, do I scale back my content? So now I have less time to stream games, but then I have time to edit news, right? Or, you know, what do I do? Do I seek out someone who maybe is trustworthy, but that means giving them access to all the content on my channel and having to trust someone to do it? That sounds like a big trust thing. You know what I mean? I don't even know who I trust to do that. You know, this has got to be one of the rare times I agree with DSP. I don't think that's a good idea that he'd do that at all. This might still be paranoid side Phil, but obviously that entire situation would just go awry as soon as possible. So, I'm going to have to think about it. I would like to hear your opinions on it, all right? What would you think? Do you think that would be a benefit to the channel? I like the idea. I seriously do. I put effort into researching these stories. I'm curious as to what he considers effort into these stories, because I would not consider scrolling through Twitter, seeing an article, and then maybe one Google search later as effort. That's not exactly elite journalism by any measure. Again, just trying to give himself an air of grandeur, as he calls it, to something that doesn't really deserve it. And trying to give you my honest takes on them every day. I wish more people knew about those takes, besides people who just happen to watch the podcast every day. You know, it would be great to have those so so sorted out or separated out or whatever. Um, but I don't know. I, I don't know realistically how to make that viable. All right. So I'm open to suggestion. I'm open to opinion. I'd like to keep talking about this moving forward. You know what I'm saying? So let's see. Let's talk about it. Let's look into it and let's go from there. That, ladies and gentlemen, is all I have to talk about on today's show. So for that reason, that's all I have to talk about. It's always excuse after excuse with this guy. It never changes, huh? Again, big ups to Snort Hogan for the clip. Always appreciate it. Of course, shout out to all of you guys for watching. And just to reiterate, you guys liking and commenting the way you do is insane. I do read every comment and some of you guys got some really good insight. Even like the really long paragraphs. If you think I'm not reading those, I am. I'm reading them all the way through, I promise. Hopefully I can catch you guys in the next one. But until then, make sure you check out the other channels and dive deeper into that snore tags. Ah!